Well, thanks everyone again for being here. That was a fun exercise we did with the Devar. We'll get into the uh, main part of our program where Rabbi Bauer and I will uh, talk a little bit about how we're re-entering uh, into the building and answer some of your questions. But before I do that, just you know, one more time thanking you for not only being on the call today, uh, but for uh, being members of our community. We realize how hard it is out there for so many people and we're just so grateful uh, to have the folks here and uh, have so many folks have, uh, have re-upped their membership already. So thank you for, for doing that. You know, as we have, uh, as we have talked about making decisions uh, regarding how we reopen, you know, it is really hard. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of changing facts. So we just went back to some core Jewish values, the value of, of saving a life. So safety is gonna be our paramount uh, our, our, our paramount value. Our, our value of find yourself a teacher from uh, per K a, a vote. Now often, uh, Rabbi Bauer, that's often we turn to you as clergy, uh, but in this case, we're turning to our medical experts uh, and people that have really uh, done this before in facilities. And we have a, a advisory group made up of doctors and physicians and public health experts and folks that have been advising others uh, procedurally and how to do food and things of that nature who have guided us along the way. We also recognize that we have to respect all members of our community and we have folks from the very youngest ages to the very oldest and that we have a diverse community and that we have to make sure that it's safe and working for everyone. And all of those values are being uh, in place so that this year in particular we can really focus on the three cores uh, at Emmanuel of Torah, uh, education, particularly for our youngest uh, students in our preschool and youth and family ed program, uh, prayer, our religious services, our holiday services, our life cycle services, and making sure that we have uh, the facilities uh, and the capability to continue with acts of loving kindness, continue to care for, for our, our community, both our core manual com community and the greater San Francisco community, both very, very important. Now, let me talk a little bit about where we are in the, the reopening of the building project uh, or the building process. And of course I say the building because we've been open. Uh, Rabbi Bauer will tell you he's been no less busy uh, than he ever has. Uh, and that goes for all of our clergy and, and educators and myself uh, have been uh, taken on a dime and recreated Emmanuel as a virtual synagogue. But we do obviously want to get back to being in a shared physical space as, as soon as we can. Really since the shelter in place order started, we have been in this, uh, this early initial phase uh, first where we were basically doing security checks, basic uh, maintenance, you know, check for water leaks, things of, of that nature, uh, some really basic financial stuff. But that's really all, all that we were doing. If you came by, you really wouldn't see, see much going on. Past several weeks, we have been in a reopening phase uh, where we have been in the building, we're doing the maintenance, we're doing the preparation that we need in order to, uh, to be able to operate. So if you were inside, you would see placards and hand sanitizing uh, stations. We had an expert coming in on air uh, ventilation and airflow control coming in. We're waiting for those, uh, those suggestions coming in. So, we're working on scheduling, on when things can happen so that we're not having events on top of e each other and too many people in any, any one area. So those are the, really the things that we're doing now with the goal of uh, being in a situation where we have limited use really starting um, in, in July uh, with some, uh, some families maybe doing some uh, preparation for their B'nai Mitzvah, for some very small outdoor uh, uh, programs using our courtyard. The regulations give us a little bit more leeway there. Uh, actually, uh, we'll be able uh, to uh, start streaming some services. Rabbi Bauer will talk about that in, in a moment. And then looking in September to have to expand a little bit more to be able to do more of those core services that I, I, just, I just mentioned. Uh, to have our preschool and uh, religious school back with appropriate sizes and appropriate social distancing, being able to do smaller services and life cycle ser services. And that is really how we're gonna use the building through the end of the, the calendar year, unless there are big changes one way 
or the other, focusing on uh, youth education, religious services, um, and the, the small acts of loving kindness that really help make the community. The questions, Rabbi Bauer, that I get over and over again are on you know, Shabbat services, the things of that nature, and of course, uh, the high holy days, uh, which I'm so glad people are asking on. So um, update on, on those two particular areas now that I've done kind of the thousand feet from above. So Shabbat, good questions. I mean, the Shabbat services, what we've been doing is we, we've shifted to this online platform where we've been, you know, each one of us broadcasting our homes, making these little, I guess you could say, little tiny sanctuary beamers where we've, where we are those platforms pushing that out. And we're, um, and it's been good attendance. It's interesting. If you actually watch the numbers that are, you know, if you, if you look at the numbers afterwards, there are the thousands of people that are clicking in just to see in the short bursts, but the people who are actually coming for that set time it's as if it's a regular Friday night service in Martin Meyer. And those numbers really are, have stayed consistent, which has been great to see. Um, and people connecting differently online. Um, and so we're gonna maintain that and, that. and the exciting thing is that we're actually gonna up the game in the coming few weeks with a, a company that actually can really present us from inside the sanctuary in a much more beautiful way um, and make it more real. So this is, we've learned a lot. And the nice thing is that since we've learned so much, we'll be able to now take this for God willing when we, re-enter back to the way the world was um, and actually be able to access more people in new ways. So that's on the Shabbat front. On the high holidays front, um, that same idea of services that we've been, we have been working for months and months on trying to think through high holidays because we are presented with, in some respects, challenges that no generation prior to us has really been focused with, is that if we look at high holidays traditionally, if, if you kind of boil it down, um, high holidays are going big. That, that's what it is. I love how Rabbi Beth, she points out that it is our family reunion every year because it's the family reunion. You see me sitting in this virtual courtyard, everyone immediately thinks of that fountain of the apples and the gathering and the, and the thousands of people there to see each other. And the challenge we're presented with, you know, unless something radical changes soon, that, that we won't be able to physically have that big moment, but instead drilling down to the original idea that the rabbis were trying to get to which is how do you go deep? How do you take this experience and make it incredibly deep and moving? And it's a journey, not just, you know, I guess four services, but essentially two days, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, but really kind of spread out to Elul and see how do you change a person? And so we have been working um, with kind of across all of our teams inside, as well as we have Wix in Israel, which is working with us to put together a new website to make it so people can really have a beautiful access in an elegant way to connect and not just in the online streaming services which we'll be able to do but also be able to personalize one's experience and figure out ways that you can learn in smaller cohorts and go much deeper in that learning and in that community so but those are kind of the two big areas that we're working on right now um, and trying to think through this great thank you um let's take a look i've seen some questions uh coming in uh, one last shout out to Rabbi Fenvis, couldn't help it. Um, and you notice what they're doing? Pass over the four questions. You know, if you have to explain the reference, you know, it, it is probably not worth doing, but it was a lovely image, so I did it. I was going to say they weren't socially distancing, but I you know. <laughs> Well, yeah, they, they're a pre-COVID time, something to look forward to. Uh, so a few questions that are coming in, speaking of, 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 uh, of kids, is about what we're going to be doing for our education in, in the fall, particularly our, our preschool and, and youth and family ed. And Rabbi Bauer, why don't I take the preschool if you want to take YFE, we will split sure. it up that way. Um, you know, the, the preschool, if, if I've learned anything in my six years here as executive director, is that the preschool is just such a core for the families who are in it, not only for the first time they're educating their children outside of the home, but really as a bonding experience, I, I can't tell you how many folks that I listen to have said they met have met their best friends through that preschool experience. So we are really dedicated to doing as most that we can in the fall and to, if we, to the extent that we can do it obviously uh, safely. And so our preschool is planning on being open uh, with a little bit smaller class sizes than it normally would have, a little bit less total enrollment than it would normally have for safe uh, social distancing. Um, the, you know, we have our, our own 
procedure manual for ma for a manual and uh, the one for the preschool is, is is twice as long so with all sorts of bells and whistles to make sure that it's safe but it, to the extent that we can we are planning on on doing the preschool uh, at a manual it just is something that our families and I see a few on here today have just been incredible with distance learning but we recognize for two and three year olds that's not really uh, a sustainable solution so if we can uh, our current plan is that we'll be operating a slightly smaller preschool but still one nonetheless Rabbi Bauer I know you're in the process of youth and family ed which has a much broader span of, of ages to it yeah. I, don't... I would see you know the, this past year we it, we pivoted very quickly and we've actually had incredible attendance um, with, with the service that we've done. We've, Jonathan Bear really almost turned it into a television show where people are interacting and it's fast paced and, and the kids love it so much that there was requests by the kids, if you can imagine this, that they wanted more to feel it in the summertime. So we are actually continuing into the summer now um, with, you know, with extra youth and family ed. In preparing for next year, we realized that we needed to really think through this and think differently versus just kind of, you know, getting this Hebrew class there and getting the best we could, but to think in a really logical way based upon the laws that we have on the ground right now of what we look like is gonna be coming is the way we're thinking about it is that it's gonna be a three-step process. We're gonna call it phase one, phase two, and phase three. And phase one is to think about essentially what we just did. The, the, the sheltering in place at home of really having online learning, you know, still having the big um, digital to feel that we're doing in two separate sections led by Jonathan Bear and the clergy, having art projects going inside of that, then breaking out into smaller groups where classes continue to learn. Um, and that would be phase one. And then as things open up more, we actually can throttle back, we can kind of pull back a bit and then move to phase two. And phase two is really where we've done an analysis of what does the building look like, what are the spaces, what are the requirements, and figuring out ways that we can get people back into smaller groups inside the building, which would be the safe numbers allowed. Um, we would not be doing the tefillah in person because that would be hundreds of people in person. So instead, that it becomes a hybrid model where that stays as like a TV show that the kids get to join and be a part of, and then it moves into these breakout groups. And then phase three is back to normalcy. And we're actually, currently, we're in the midst of putting for our kids, so don't tell them yet, because it's gonna come out soon, but we're putting the kids together um, kind of a whole campaign about what is their job this year? Because this is not the first time in Judaism that we have been, something external from us has tried to keep us from learning. And so we have these different superhero characters, um, Thor Bernstein, which is, loosely based off Thor, but he's a Jewish Thor, um, fighting back against um, coronavirus and making sure that no matter what we're gonna learn, if we are stuck at home, we are gonna learn and do Judaism. If we are in groups of 12, we're gonna do Judaism and eventually we'll be back together as a huge community with our arms around each other. And so we're, we're in the process of finalizing and getting that kind of the, the, the campaign together, but for the kids to get excited and realize that they're part of something much bigger with an end goal in line. Cool. Okay. Well, speaking of uh, how we use the building and your background, uh, a couple of people have asked about the Manual Next project. Sometimes uh, some people have said the building project, some Manual Next, uh, the big project, another way uh, someone has, has talked about it. So uh, let me give an update just kind of procedurally where we are. And then Rabbi Bauer, I'd love to get your insights on whether the designs really still feel like they need, uh, meet you know, today's needs or the needs as we're seeing them develop along the way. You know, it's interesting procedurally, uh, the good news and the bad news is, is that with San Francisco's, you know, approval process, where we were probably in a one and a half to two years runway right now anyways, it hasn't really impacted the project slowing down. We've, again, been incredibly fortunate with some major donors uh, that, have us at a point where we can continue to go forward. We look forward to at the appropriate time making the case uh, with the rest of the congregation. But as far as the process goes, there's enough time that everything really is still uh, on schedule for uh, an approval process and then a one to two year construction project. So we're still on that, that, same, that same trajectory. Um, 
but you know, we do get questions about, do we think the building is the, the right design for the future? Uh, and you know, again, another bit of good news, we were, were only at a point, despite the fact you've seen so many images, really only 20% of schematic design, which is not even a full design. So we still have lots of time to kind of make sure that we're doing things the right way. But Rabbi Barrett, just on a core basis, could you your thought of the, the initiatives and, and how, they, how they mesh with the time we're in now? Uh, and I think it's a great question because if we, this is, this has been a process we have been doing for a long time, for year after year after year of really preparing for this, figuring out w where are we and where are we trying to go? And we identified our, our core initiatives that we were trying to accomplish. And you know, we talked about safety and security, sustainability, that we wanted education to be really important as well. We wanted intimate spaces where people could really connect and see each other and also to make sure that there was financial access for everybody. Now, as we put these down years ago, I mean, I think it's incredibly incredible thing is that over time, they become more and more relevant over time. When we put down safety and security, that was before Pittsburgh ever happened. And we identified that the world seemed to be changing and we had to take care of that. When we talk about financial access, when we're sitting in this moment with the economy sinking right now, we are aware that we're going to have to make sure that our buildings are open to everybody into the future. So if anything, I feel like this this pandemic that we're in has actually taken our five initiatives um, or six initiatives and really put a spotlight on them of just how important they are. Because the thing that is maintained inside this virtual learning has been those intimate connections. That's what people have been drawn to. And so I would say 100% I'm even more certain today than I, if you would have asked me six months ago that these are the, the, this is definitely the right direction for the next 50 to 100 years for us. Excellent. Thank you. And then one final question uh, before our, our time is is up, uh, and I we, we did get a couple more, but I'm going to pick this one because I love it so much. Uh, what can we as members do to help the temple, uh, which is a great uh, question to ask. And, um, mm. you know, I'll, you know, end with what I started uh, with is just thanking you for, for being members and being active parts of our community. Um, in the next week or so, if you're watching the recording later, you may have already gotten, we're doing a survey with the URJ for you to tell us uh, how we're doing specifically, and we'd love to hear from you, but we, we want your involvement. We, we need your help being able to continue to provide services in a way that are meaningful to you. So thank you for being here and staying, staying involved. Robert Bauer? And you know, I would say, I, I actually leave this background up intentionally. Um, on all of my meetings. You know, I've been on meetings with, with the tribe until 1030 every single Tuesday night um, and make sure that this is what I keep up behind me because this is really about looking forward to the future. It's about being hopeful. And if we look back, so we'll look up forward in a minute, but if we look back at the last time that we talked about a massive campaign to really think about the next hundred years, was just two years after the 1918 pandemic. Hmm. It was the last time that you can imagine, well, we now know what it's like living in a pandemic to say, the world will, will never be the same, it'll never. And instead the Jews of San Francisco, they looked forward and they were optimistic and they were hopeful. And so when we look at this surrounding of this new courtyard of this new building, that's who we are. That things may get difficult, but we are people who never give up. We always look forward and not just think about what is it gonna be like for me and my generation, but we think about the generations that come after us that won't even remember my name, won't remember any of our names, but building to make sure that we're constantly taking care of the generations that follow us. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for supporting Emmanuel. I cannot thank you enough for that. And also thank you for your hope as, as each one of us step forward, sometimes in the darkness, because you kind of have to go through the darkness at times in order to get to the light. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Rabbi. And on that message of hope, we will uh, end our town hall, look for uh, other ones. We will be doing more of these kind of low-key informal ones. So uh, uh, look forward to that. Thanks, everybody.